The church's mission is not to keep you in, to keep women in the church, uh, to keep men in the church, uh, but to prepare you for the ultimate calling. Welcome to the last dispensation. You're living in it. Welcome back once again, brothers and sisters, to the program. I'm discussing a recent article from the Salt Lake Tribune. The title is Doubling Down on Garments and Motherhood May Not Keep Young Women in the Fold. Now, is that something I'm subscribing to? Do I think that that's what our leaders are doing? No. Does Heavenly Father know that there are complex situations in life? And as time goes on and more and more divorces happen, and not only that, technology innovations, uh, we have 150 years ago, the, the industrial age began. Women were working in factories, and during World War II, they were working outside the home. And then here comes the 50s, they go back into the home. But even during the time of Christ, women worked. Men worked too. They were carpenters, they were fishermen, they were tecton, they did farming. And women worked as well. So the roles of men and women are also cultural. Heavenly Father understands that. The article highlights Relief Society President Camille Johnson's talk, of course, at Brigham Young University. What do they say? You can leave, but you can't leave it alone. Uh, where she emphasized, the, I'm saying that because most of the people that work at the Salt Lake Tribune that, wa- that write pieces like that have either been in the church once or they're still in. Uh, so Camille Johnson, she emphasizes the importance of marriage and motherhood for all LDS women. The article points out, and some might point out or interpret this, her talk as the church trying to keep women or people in general within its ranks. But I'd like to offer a different perspective. The church's interest is not in trying to get people to stay in the church like it's some kind of club. Rather, its mission is to gather the elect of God who are prepared to hear the Savior's voice and fill the Spirit. The Lord is not working to increase the membership of the church. I don't believe that. I mean, yes, he, he loves numbers. Mission, mission presidents will even tell you this. And on my mission, we, all, we always used to say laughingly, but tr- truthfully, that Jesus Christ is the big mission president in the sky. He wanted people to come into the church through the waters of baptism. But more importantly, he wants to gather Israel. But more importantly, he wants to gather Israel. That's what he's doing and the elect of God. He's not just trying to dunk anybody, especially those who don't care about covenants. The Lord is, and that's what I believe, that the Lord is not working to increase the membership of the church necessarily, but he's working to make available to the world the blessings of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is in line with the Lord's own words in Doctrine and Covenants 1, section 1, verse 4, which states, the voice of warning shall be unto all who all people okay so it's out there to the world to everyone who has a has an ear to hear it and by the mouths of who missionaries right full-time missionaries member missionaries we are the disciples we're his disciples we are the disciples of jesus christ he says whom i have chosen in these last days the church's mission It's to gather Israel and to call to repentance those who want to repent and get back to their heavenly father and Jesus Christ. The gospel plan involves three kingdoms, three parts of heaven, celestial, terrestrial, celestial. That's why Latter-day Saints, if you're new to the channel, believe that salvation is for all, all, except for those who have committed the unpardonable sin and the the unpardonable sin is that you knew god 
you were like Moses or Noah or Abraham, and then you de- defied him. Cain. Cain is called perdition. You had to have a witness of the Holy Ghost. That's what modern prophets have, has, have emphasized even further. It's not about following the whims of public opinion at all or trying to appease everyone. President Ezra Tapp Benson said, the Lord is not required to follow public opinion or to conform to the world's standards. He also said that tolerance is not conformity to uh, the world's view and, and practices. We must not, he said, we must not surrender our beliefs to get along with the people. God offers the gospel to everyone, but he knows that not all of his children will follow suit. He knows that. Second Nephi chapter 28, verse 30, For behold, thus saith the Lord God, I will give unto the children of men, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, Blessed are those who hearken unto my precepts, for unto him that receiveth I will give more. But you have to first receive what he's giving you before he can give you more. So he's not forcing anyone, right? And 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 this isn't a club. Like the Lord is not necessarily interested in numbers. He's interested in the happiness, whatever makes his children happy. He knows that ultimate happiness comes from following the commandments, making covenants, and and exaltation is ultimate happiness. But he does not want those who are going to be miserable in that as well. And it goes on, 2 Nephi chapter 28, verse 30, For unto him that receiveth I will give more, and from them that shall say we have enough, from them shall be taken away even that which they have. The Lord does that now. He takes away what they have if they say they don't want any more. And he's, he's not talking about the world who says, I'm content with what I have. He's talking about the gospel here. He's talking to, about, he's talking to the members of the church who don't want to progress any further that light will be taken away from them. They're damning themselves in a sense. The light is taken away from them. The Lord warned in Isaiah, the Lord in Isaiah chapter eight, the Lord warned Isaiah not to follow the path the people were taking, not to be afraid of their threats. Instead, Isaiah was to fear the Lord who is holy. Exodus 23, two, the verse instructs Israel not to follow the crowd in doing evil, nor to change their testimony, follow after the crowd in perverting justice. President Nelson stated that when we choose to make covenants with God, our relationship with him can become much closer than it was before our covenant, and it enables our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ to bless us with an extra measure of his mercy, his love, a covenantal love referred to as hesed. In the Hebrew language, this emphasizes the importance of making covenants. Our Heavenly Father is in the in the gospel with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our Heavenly Father is interested in those who want to make covenants. Period. The rest of the world, terrestrial and celestial, is being taken care of on another plan. But if we want upper management for eternity, if we want to be upper management with our Heavenly Father. And with eternal happiness, when I say upper management, I don't mean that as some ambition for power. I mean to live with, to inherit what our Heavenly Father hath. Then we need to make covenants. And that love is conditional. Has said the Hebrew love and covenant making, the pure love of Christ, agape is has said kindness, loving kindness where the Lord grabs our heart, where he loves the good-hearted. John the Beloved was Hesed because he loved, he wanted, because he desired what God desired of him. He wanted to know God. He wanted to supplicate. That's why John was a beloved. 
So does God want to keep people in the church? If they want to be kept in the church, I would say. He has alternate plans, lesser plans. Uh, it's up to them. Of course he does. Does he mourn those who leave? Yes, he does. He mourns those who leave. He knows how happier they can be. So in a nutshell, let's not misunderstand the church's stance. Let's not misunderstand the emphasis on marriage and motherhood. I didn't really talk much about that, but it doesn't matter. It's not about controlling people. And that's kind of what the article was saying. Um, it's not about limiting their choices. Women's choices aren't limited any more than men's choices. Our choices aren't limited. They're commandments and policies. Policies are the same as commandments. Why? Because they come from the Savior's anointed. Are they eternal principles? Not all the time, no. But God, don't forget, God has given these men and women the authority to act in the name of God. They have keys, and the Lord said, this is my church. So, he's, so we're not trying to control people, limit their choices, or frantically keep them in the church. It's about providing a framework for spiritual growth, period, for building families. Yes, there are dynamics in the family, the family unit. Uh, there are many divorced families now and many single, but we're not going to stop trying to promote the nuclear family. That's just the way it's going to be. And even though I didn't grow up in the perfect nuclear family, I still know as I see others emulate that in the church, that that is right. That is wholesome. And I'm not going to envy or resent those that have that family unit. I think the Lord's goal is to have an environment where the spirit can uh, flourish, where we make covenants. And if nobody's interested in that, then, um, then there's alternatives. Thank you for watching everyone. And remember the church's mission is to gather the elect and all to repentance, to gather Israel. That's what our prophet is saying, not to follow public opinion, not to frantically uh, change the rules to keep people in the church. That's not what's happening. Heavenly Father will make changes. Like I said, Israel was given opportunities for greater blessings and greater covenants. They didn't want it. And then he took it away. He took a lot more away. So, so the Lord does make changes. Uh, and sometimes will possibly water things down for a time if people aren't living up to par, if the, maybe even the membership isn't living up to par with that. There's no doubt that that possibly happens. We're getting what the Lord wants us to hear, whether it's because we didn't live up to something or not. Either way, we're still getting it. And that doesn't mean the Lord's anointed is not the Lord's anointed. They are. doesn't mean the Lord's anointed failed. They've warned us in every which way possible for 194 years. Thank you for watching, everyone. So on that note, if you like the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, ding the bell for notifications, and go to the, you got to go up and, and click the all part of the bell. Leave your thoughts and your comments in the section down below. If you'd like to contribute to the program, I prefer venmo cash app or paypal you can also support me and andrea by purchasing products from the affiliates look i got bicycles order a bike put it together go riding with your family i got bicycles i got skateboards for kids maybe there's a birthday coming up and ham radios and record players all right and i get a percentage of all that you can also support us by becoming a YouTube member. There's Sunbeam, CTRs, and Valiants. That's right. And that's a monthly thing that comes out that supports this household and the platform. Every bit helps. Until next time, stay faithful and keep seeking the truth. We don't really know where the world is going to go. 
I know everybody knows that you can't stop for too long. Got to keep going, don't really know where the world is gonna go. I know everybody.